going on guys so today's video is going to be another garden tour the last garden tour was about a month or so so a lot has changed so let's check it out all right so first things first got a plum tree here that's fairly grown still haven't put that in the ground yet obviously but here are all my seedlings that I had in the little mini greenhouse there. But basically got a bunch of different varieties of tomatoes, peppers. I think it's all peppers. Oh, this is, these are the peppers here. A bunch of different tomatoes. And I picked up a melon here as well. So one thing that I want to point out is if you can tell there's actually three different plants in this one that I bought here from I think it was Home Depot or I forgot where exactly but I paid I think like three bucks two three bucks and I got three plants so that's one thing to look at if you're gonna be buying any transplants is try and find plants that are that have more than one plant in it next it's a little mess back here but anyways <clears throat> I got uh, three clones here so these are cannabis but uh, it's my first time trying to clone so it seems like they they're starting to root but let's see how this goes now I put this in this like iguana tank that I found uh, on laying on the side of the street someone's getting rid of it so I picked it up knowing that I might use it and sure enough this was a perfect use so it's in this container because it needs to be in a humid environment so by keeping it secure Keeping it in this container and giving it a spritz every so often keeps that humidity in. So there's nothing really in here. All my seedlings are outside currently. And then the compost bins. I won't show you that. It's just some compost. Oh, I'm right back here. I got more seedlings, eggplants, tomatoes, watermelon. There. A few other things. All right, so first things first, here I got the broccoli romanesca. Here you can see the head's pretty much formed. Um, it's really small, but it, then again, it's starting to spread out like this. You can see like the cracks in it. You might be harvesting this real soon. And unfortunately, it's been, it's been getting quite hot, so this is why it's kind of underdeveloped, really. And they got a bunch of onions, which you can see more indication that temperatures are getting hot. So this is what a bunch of onion or green onion looks like when it starts to flower. Same thing here. This is what it's gonna. This is what it looks like when it first starts to flower, and then eventually it'll look like this. But I've been harvesting these, just cut and come again. So I just been cutting onions as when I need them and then just keep growing back but these are producing quite a lot for me so we got another broccoli romanesca and you can see these heads aren't I don't think they're getting any bigger it's been over 130 140 days and I think this is the max they're gonna be growing And got, I believe this is a cucumber. Yeah, this is cucumber, a squash. I think it's squash. And then got spinach that I've been harvesting and starting to go to seed. You can see the stem is getting pretty high up there and it's been getting eaten by earwigs as well, aka pincher bugs. And some more green onion that I gotta come and harvest some more what else we got here here's another broccoli romanesca that hasn't developed a head so I think this is pretty much not gonna be forming any heads unfortunately I started the um, the broccoli way too late in the season I knew I was, I was taking a chance with it but hey I just wanted to see if I could get ahead as you can see the grapes have grown tremendously uh, compared to 
what it was back in early spring. So, yeah, the grapes are just been kind of unruly, but let's see, let me check this out. Let's see. This is the first year that I'm actually getting some grapes. Check that out, guys. Very, very excited about these grapes. I have yet to harvest from this plant so far. However, it's looking promising because I've never actually gotten grape development. Should be getting bigger in the coming months. And this is what the grapes normally look like when they're barely starting to form flowers. And then eventually, if they get pollinated, they'll start to look like this. But it's gotten quite big. I have it going on the cattle panel trellis there. And I got it going also all along the dog kennel here there. So hopefully by maybe next year or who knows, maybe even this year, I'll have it going all across, providing somewhat shade to this area. So let's take you on over here. Again, the compost bin I've been filling up. Now I got these patio pickers which I still haven't used it. I don't have enough soil to, to use, but I've been wanting to use them. And then I laid down the cardboard to try and get rid of all this crab grass that's underneath, you can see. It's starting to kill it off. But yeah, this is just temporary. Still gotta get rid of all this here. Now this was a volunteer tomato. So I did have a tomato planted in here and then ended up uh, taking it out. However, uh, one of the tomatoes actually dropped the, the fruit down here and it actually planted itself and started to grow. So it was pretty cool. I'm just going to let that go, see if it lasts. But it's looking pretty healthy. I've been watering it. So. All right. So the jasmine this is supposed to be pink jasmine and as of right now it's not looking too good at all and I think it's because the soil is pretty compacted so I've been meaning to get in here and pull it up and add some uh, some looser soil but yeah, so far the jasmine's not looking too happy right now. So now this plant here, I don't know exactly what this is. So Lowe's was actually having a, a spring sale and they were giving away a few things. One of which was a, they called it a mystery pinata. And there's a video that I'm developing. I'm waiting for these to get a little larger, but here's a sneak peek of what they're actually looking like. Stay tuned for another video once these get a little bigger. I'll show you guys the development. Here I got a, this is a squash here, the aloe vera, and then this is the newest addition to the garden. So here is the dragon fruit. So I got two different varieties. This is, this one is a pink flesh. So these are two separate plants. And then a third, this is red flesh. I just put this one in. So I picked these two up off of Home Depot. This was one plant, or this was in one pot really, and it came with two plants, so I squirted on that. And this was one, but it's pretty big. But eventually, once these get taller, I'm gonna keep trellising them up, and then eventually they're gonna go through here, and then out and over and cascade here, so. So this trellis idea I got off of Kevin from Epic Gardening. I also kind of copied him on the terracotta pot as well. So I think it looks really nice with the trellis, if I don't say so myself. Anyways, I got two more tomatoes. Now these are 
determinate tomatoes, meaning they're more of a bush variety than they are an actual um, climbing variety. So picked up these two again as transplants, looking really well. And they're already starting to develop flowers, so that should be produced for me soon. Now let's turn back over here. Again here, here's the grapes that are climbing through up onto the trellis here. I've been trying to weave them in and out to, to keep them trying to keep going down and through the trellis. And here I have another tomato. This variety I believe is the Berkeley tie-dye variety. And then again this is more broccoli. You can see there's no head really forming at all. So these all I started with the same broccoli that were in that bed over there at the same time and all of them pretty much uh, are not going to be producing anything for me really which I knew I knew for a fact I was taking a gamble starting them in uh, pretty much early spring really knowing that my area gets really hot I, there's more tomatoes this is again I think Berkeley tie-dye and if you see this white powder around the garden uh, this is diatomaceous earth so I've been having issues with earwigs as I mentioned earlier and I have a video coming out on it but pretty much my garden has been taking a big hit when it comes to earwigs you can see look at this all these bite marks are from earwigs so they've been chomping down on my plants slowly but surely and like I said stay tuned for that video to show you how I'm get, uh, taking care of them All right, now here, here if you remember last video, I had planted a bunch of potatoes. So since harvest slows, and then now I've planted, this is uh, two cucumbers, so one cucumber and the second cucumber, and then some oil traps for the earwigs. I'm gonna be growing this one up this trellis here to fill it out going up. And then I'm using this uh, trellising system. It's called the Lauren Link system. I've mentioned it in other videos, but basically you can see that I've tied it with a small tomato clip. And eventually once it gets large enough and uh, I start to prune to one main stem, it'll go all the way up. And eventually once it hits the top, I'm able to bring this string here and drop it down and eventually start to lean it that way. So it gives it pretty much about 20 feet or so of grow space in this small area. The rest here are different varieties of tomatoes. So here, another Berkeley tie-dye. This one here is a Black Beauty tomato and various other varieties of different tomatoes. But for tomatoes here and also the cucumbers, I'm picking off these what's are called suckers. I also have a video on how to uh, how to turn these into new plants. So pretty much been picking off all the new growth here called suckers and that's gonna keep it to one main stem which is this one here. So I've been keeping these quite tidy. Haven't really let them grow any of those suckers but you can see this one here is way more developed much older and it's already producing flowers so this is about the size that I'll also let the flowers bloom because I have been picking the flowers off of these smaller ones because I want them to um, focus more on uh, their actual growth rather than developing um, fruit yet but this is about the size that I kind of want them to be to start uh, giving me producing me some fruit so and here again more and more tomatoes so this season, I'm gonna have a whole lot of tomatoes. All right, so on this bed, I have planted corn. In the last video, it was pretty much an empty bed. And so you can see that these have taken one of the biggest hits, really, of the earwigs. 
All this is earwig damage. They've really hindered these from growing even though they have are still growing. I may have to take these completely out and um, start fresh because they are not really looking too good. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Tell, let me know in the comments if I should try and save these or should I just start fresh? Because right now I'm thinking I'm gonna start fresh. And end up planting uh, gladiolus. So I got some bulbs from the 99. I think they're like a six pack for, for actual dry bulbs of gladiolus. So that's what that is. Here's some marigolds that I started from seed. They're also they're doing pretty well compared to the corn being right next to it, but the earwigs have eaten one or two. So that was completely gone. It's been eaten. And again, another gladiolus. And yeah, some more gladiolus. And here is another gladiolus, an actual one that I put in here, and again with tulips. Now if you haven't noticed, I actually did put gravel down and took out all the actual straw that I had laid down. And that was again due to the earwigs. So the earwigs were actually getting underneath the straw and pretty much having uh, like nests underneath it. So cleaned it all out and then lay down gravel which is somewhat of a deterrent they don't they can't really get underneath the rocks and next I forgot to mention cannabis is looking fairly well I have another one though that isn't got hit pretty bad by the earwigs but I have these kind of just in the way I've been moving them around here and there because I've noticed earwigs coming from these little this little dirt area has been coming over and kind of crawling through and getting on top. So I've been moving them around. That's why they're kind of like in the walkway as of right now. More tomatoes here. Here we have a watermelon. It's getting quite large from what it used to look like. Again, more earwig damage. But here, have a, a mammoth sunflower now it's not really looking too mammoth and that's because sunflowers took a really big hit by the earwigs but watermelon another mammoth sunflower another one another one and then again watermelon interplanted around there you got some strawberries here Still waiting on the harvest, but it should be coming in. Now these bell peppers are what first alerted me to the earwig issue. It's like the maximum devastation that earwigs do. They'll just leave your plants completely skeletonized, just like this. Completely gone and bare. I have some carrots here that also got took a big hit, but you're still, you're coming back. So, carrots here looking okay. Here I just planted some potato and it's pretty late in the season, but I'm gonna see if I could try and get a harvest out of them before the summer comes. And here's uh, another tomato that I took a sucker off of and replanted and now it's starting to grow. This, I don't know exactly what this is. My dad wanted me to grow it. Just let me know if you know what it is down in the comments. Here's some more plants that I've been growing in the mini greenhouse. So some bell peppers here. These are morning glories. Uh, these are marigolds. Some more morning glories and marigolds in the back and a bunch of peppers down there. And the lime tree producing quite nicely. I haven't really done much to this other than give it a little trim here and there to kind of open up this walkway which I probably got to trim a little more down the side just to open this little path up. 
Again, this section was pretty empty, but I ended up planting, planting African daisies. So these are what these are. Again, another cannabis plant. But this one here, whew, this one took quite the biggest hit. Look at this. Terrible. So it's been drooping like this. I don't think it's gonna come back to be quite honest with you. But I was still holding on. There is some new growth here that looks okay. But I might trim this back, I don't know. Next, we got squash. This is doing quite well. You can see it's starting to develop some flowers here and here. This is another sunflower. This one's an evening sunflower, so it's different from the mammoth sunflowers that are supposed to get really large, but never did. But anyways, the evening sunflower. I have some beans in the back. Another sunflower. This one is a straight neck squash. Another sunflower. And another sunflower starting to pop. And more squash, squash, sunflower, and this is actually a bush bean that I planted accidentally. I thought it was a um, pole bean, but it ended up being a bush bean. So I ended up planting some more uh, pole beans here, and you could already see it starting to pop up. So hopefully you can fill the, this little gap here, and eventually I'll thin the beans out down here. But I want them to get a little bit bigger. And then the idea is pretty much to trellis them up. This trellis is... And then again, some more broccoli. Romanesca, you can see. This head's getting a little bigger than the others, but still quite small. And then broccoli, Romanesca. Another broccoli, another broccoli. And in between it all, Got some bulbing onions and some more carrots there. And then the bell peppers that have been about a year old and they're still producing, so I think after this harvest though, I'm gonna cut them down. Eh? So that concludes the tour. So I plan to actually be doing maybe once a month doing these garden tours so you can actually see the progression of everything growing. But uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and as always, you won't get a harvest if you don't sow seeds.